Dear brother and sister, the saints of Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is a critical issue. I spoke about it before, but would like to, to shed more light on this. Uh, it is again about the Council of Chalcedon. What are actually the real reasons uh, of excommunicating the Coptic Orthodox Church in this uh, council? Uh, a bit long introduction. Uh, in the book of Mark chapter 10, we read the following. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us what we ask. Actually, they asked it before and with, with, their mom was uh, attending before. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and one on the other on your, uh, on your left in your glory and when the ten heard the, the heard it of course they began to be greatly displeased with james and john very human reaction but jesus called them to himself of course he called the, the whole group and said to them you know that those who are considered rulers over the gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them yet it shall not be so among you but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant and whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave to uh, of all and we all remember that also in the book of john chapter 13 that was the last lesson the lord gave it to the disciples by washing their feet uh, sorry their feet so when he had washed their feet taking his garment and sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You, shall, you? you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If then your Lord and the teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So, this is the issue and uh, we will find now it is the, the, the main problem and it could be that's why the Lord was, was keen to be the last lis lesson to repeat to recap with them on the night uh, of his crucifixion so that was number one number two it is extremely easy that you take just a phrase or a statement from someone that you dislike and you just interpret it in a way that this is heresy and uh, you lobby some of his uh, enemies and maybe also you uh, communicate and lobby even the emperor and you persuade him to uh, uh, have a council to be held and eventually uh, you uh, judge him as a heretic person and you exile uh, exile him and even burning his books this is an easy situation uh take let's take an example of that uh saint mary is called the mother of jesus the bible never mentioned her as a mother of god for your own like uh desire you would like to drag someone down you might tell him i oh, don't really if you say if you do, if you disagree with the, the title mother of god this means you deny the uh divinity of uh, Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I did not deny the, the divinity of Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm saying also God has no mother. But actually she gave birth to the incarnate Son of God. But of course, uh, he keep going around the bushes to drag him down. Okay. Number three, it is extremely easily that you can attribute falsely some saying to someone, that you don't like and this saying actually is heresy and again you like you lobby with others those who don't like him and actually you might even uh, call for uh, uh, a council to be held even if it doesn't come it doesn't matter and easily just you uh, judge him and consider him as a heretic uh, give you an example in episode number 75 the egyptian pharaoh 
sense of us uh excommunicated 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 uh john the uh, chrysostom uh, unjustly because the queen if to if to say at that time hated john chrysostom because he like he used like to uh, rebuke her and at the same time his his star began to shine compared to the Pope of Alexandria, so how come this could happen? So they just came together, conspiracy, get him 29 heresies, exile him in year 404. He died in year 407. A few years later, the, the Church of Rome put a pressure on the Church of Alexandria. They consider him as a saint. And even now when there is the, like someone who speaks well in the Coptic church, they call him the Chrysostom of whatever, uh, of the century of uh, the 20th century, for example. And uh, at the same time, Theophilus, the one who actually unjustly excommunicated and was the reason to exile John Chrysostom, he's still saying, so how come someone committed such a, a big crime and you still consider him as a saint he should be the heretic one because he did that but in fact it was politically it is it's a political situation all right number four how it is so easily that many years after the councils that you can add more canons and laws like in other words like if you forge what they actually decided and whenever someone says something to ah oh, but this is decided in this uh, council while well, actually it is not give you example uh, i'll give you an example uh, in episode number 74 father Athanasius of saint macarius assures that 84 canons were falsely added to the 20 canons of the first council of nicaea that was held in 325 so can you imagine they have 20 they added on the top of them 84 just to like to tell people it was decided like that in the like in the council while actually it was not i would like to stress on the in this particular point or something now uh, well, well, there was some issues and uh, you know that every time I bring uh, what uh, Father Athanasius of St. Macarius said because he actually he is really a great researcher, you respect him. But actually because actually he exposed plenty of the the stuff that people, this, this is apostolic and say and says no it is not apostolic and, uh, like, and even like he exposes all the lies from the books. Now, they could not actually call him for like a council to discuss with him because he had the proof. He got the evidence, strong evidence from their books. They couldn't. But they consider him as a heretic. Someone was just blaming me a few days ago. How come that you say, just like a talk, you bring the stuff of Abu Asanasius. Go to his site and he is considered as her. As heretic what do you mean he's considered did you anyone dare to negotiate with him to debate with him of course not they couldn't they say they said the same about father Matthew Miskin, by the way and they couldn't but now even it could go up to someone they they are scared of him they hated him they cannot debate with him and at the same time say ah oh, we consider him as heretic now to consider someone as heretic you must discuss with him so even you don't even call out of a council now because you cannot all right uh, i give you another example uh, regarding like forging the uh, canons of the councils in uh, episode number 76 uh, which is the uh, uh, I, I mentioned that the canons of the council of ephesus the first Council of Ephesus, year 431. The Coptic Church said the introduction of the creed was decided in this canon, uh, in this uh, in this council, and that was a lie. was not was not true. We proved that. So, the 
my uh, so the, now those four points are finished now the, the introduction a bit long introduction the, my objective of this to show you that the the the, the councils uh, they are considered as uh, infallible led by the Holy Spirit but in fact you can uh, forge the canons in fact they come for a political like motive but they put like uh, a, a faith uh, topic so we cannot actually trust what are the real motivations behind calling for a council and even after the council is held and there are some canons there is no guarantee that those canons will keep will be kept intact but in fact you can add you can delete you can forge you can change even one word like that so how come that you you think that uh, uh, you trust those uh, uh, councils and their, their canons there is no way that you can guarantee this all right so now uh, oh, uh, I would like also to add that the Coptic Orthodox Church they consider that there are three resources for the canons and all that stuff. Number one is the Bible. Actually, it should be the Bible only. That's it. But after that, the, the canons of the councils and the canons of the patriarchs, and even they give them as if to the Bible. But in fact, even the above the Bible, because sometimes they take a canon in a council that actually again is some, some stuff of the Bible, all right? Like for example, when they decided the bishop must be uh, not married, while actually the Bible said must be married to one man, one woman, all right? This is one example of this stuff. Uh, now, we now we come to the main point, which is like uh, what actually the real reasons of the uh, 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 Council of Chalcedon. I have an episode number eight, if you'd like to go in detail about this one, all right? Like uh, the, the Council of Chalcedon. I discussed it at that time as if there was uh, like uh, a real faith issue. But anyway, the conclusion was the, the church, the Coptic church was excommunicated. That's the main thing. Uh, but in this episode, now I would like to go like what actually the real reason? Was it really faith? But in fact, all of them will find out it's all like that. Uh, there is a video for Amber of Ail, or actually, like, uh, but I can't put it because it is uh, it has like uh, some uh, some rights. In this episode, he assures uh, the church was they did not say excommunicated, but they said they dismissed us in Chalcedon. Like is this, like if he is uh, like uh, ashamed to be called excommunicated, but the reality it is excommunicated. It changing the word into they dismissed us uh, wouldn't change the, the fact that the church, the Coptic Orthodox Church was excommunicated by the Holy Spirit, by the mouth of 520 bishops. And as long as you believe that the councils are infallible, this means the Holy Spirit is leading them. This means the, the Holy Spirit didn't make a mistake. So when they excommunicated you, it was the Holy Spirit, according to what you believe, exactly what you've done with uh, uh, Arius, what you've done with Nestorius. Okay. Uh, and he said uh, in this uh, council also, it was unjustly that um, Bodhius was exiled. Why? Uh, everyone that was considered as heretic normally, they exile him and even burn his, his books. And by the way, and also he said it was unjustly, they, like, they struck him on a uh, uh, civilian uh, like that. That was normal. That was the system for they struck the person in his mouth as he is uh, speaking heretic, her heresies. Number two, they plug some of his, pl they plug some of the hair of his beard as is stripping him of priesthood which means by the way when a church is excommunicated that her priesthood is not valid anymore by the holy spirit because it was excommunicated by the holy spirit exactly like when 
a priest, for example, uh, is excommunicated, uh, if he baptizes someone, then they say, this baptize, baptism is not accepted, we have to repeat it again. If he get like two people to get married together, they say, no, 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 was not actually have, the sacrament was not actually uh, done or performed, so we have to repeat it again. And they, again, if he made them like uh, a mess, they said, no, actually the uh, wine and the bread did not convert because he was excommunicated. Okay, so if a church is excommunicated, it means it's priesthood is over. This means what? Sincere 451, the Coptic Church, all the priests, all the bishops, all the, even the popes are, but their, their, their priesthood is invalid and the old sacrament, old sacramental uh, performances are invalid. Uh, so uh, baptism, wedding, uh, confession, masses, uh, it is it is not uh, working. It is, it is not working. Okay. Now we come now. What are actually the real reasons behind the uh, excommunicating the uh, the Coptic Church in uh, the Council of Chalcedon? Uh, Let's watch a video for Ambashnuda uh, uh, to assure that there was uh, a real faith issue, but also there was another hidden agenda. I'll mention this stuff to you to like when you watch as much as you can, if you can understand it. What she will say is the following. It is really strange that in the... Uh, uh, the uh, Chalcedon, uh, the Council of, uh, Council of Chalcedon, they say the two natures of Christ were united into one, but he said when you go to the details, they s like split them. I would answer this. Yes, if it, like, like exactly like the Trinity, in order like to explain it, you have to explain every person uh, individually. But at all times you say, but the three are one. So exac exactly the same. They believe that actually, there are two, two natures, but they were united into one. But when they explain, they explain like the divine nature of Christ and also the human nature of Christ separately uh, to just to, like to, to understand. But they didn't say two, but the, it is the, the desire to catch someone while actually he is not wrong. Watch also, also when he would say with pride that uh, then Constantinople wanted to revenge from the greatness of Alexandria. Aha, uh -huh. we we'll come bit by bit. Next, he would say he will say that the people, the other patriarchs used to say that the patriarch of Alexandria, the patriarchs of Alexandria, they have nothing except to calling for councils and being the leader of these councils or the bosses of these councils. This is actually a true thing. Uh, and also watch he will repeat again with another pride that they wanted to, to get rid of the supremacy or the prestige of Alexandria. Uh, now we know what was going uh, on. All right. So I would summarize it the following. Actually, they wanted to get rid of the arrogancy of Alexandria and the pharaohs of Alexandria, which are the patriarchs. البدع الخلق دنيا اللي هي بدعة الطبيعة مجمع خلق دنيا اجتمع سنة 451 ميلادية وكانت جزور النسطورية ما تزال موجودة وبعض النساطرة حضروه وقالوا اخطر ما فيه البيان أو المنشور الذي أصدره ليو الكبير أسقف روما يسموه لاون في في تاريخ الكنيسة والمنشور بتاعه يسموه توماس لاون كلمة توم يعني زي بامفلت يعني نبزة صغيرة توم بالفرنساوي كده برضو كلمة توم توموس باليوناني يعني كتاب صغير يعني بوكلت 
توماس لاون ده ملعون في كل كتب التاريخ عندنا وفي السنكسار وفي سير القديسين اللي عاصروا مجمع خلق دنيا واللي اضطهدوا بسبب مجمع خلق دنيا الى اخره. قال ان المسيح اثنان اله وانسان. الاله يبهر بالمعجزات والانسان هو اللي بيتحمل الالام. وهكذا فصل بين اللاهوت والناسوت وجعل منهما اثنين وانكر وحده الطبيعتين. العجيب ان مجمع خلق دنيا يقول الطبيعتين متحدتين ولكن بالشروحات الموجوده يفصلهما تماما. حصل صراع القديس ديسقورس وقف قصتهم فانتقمت القسطنطينيه من عظمه الاسكندريه وقالوا بطاركة الإسكندرية لا هم لهم سوى جمع المجامع والترقص عليها هم عايزين يتخلصوا من هيبة الإسكندرية دي بس فما صدقوا ديوسقورس نفوه وبدأوا سلسلة اضطهاد مرة على الكنيسة القبطية لعلهم يتخلصون منها. We'll give some examples of this arrogance stuff. Uh, it's in Arabic, but I uh, translated this. Uh, there is a book for a person named uh, Bishop Ioannis, uh, was the bishop of uh, a province in Egypt or a governorate named Al Garbiya. He passed away a long time ago, but uh, he, he was a very dedicated person and a very knowledgeable person, and he wrote a few books. Uh, in one of his books, actually titled, and he was a lecturer in the uh, uh, Clericaia. Uh, especially about the history in one of his books that he has like some lectures about the uh, like uh, ecclesiastical uh, councils he said in the council of Constantinople which is the second council uh, year 381 page 44 and 55 he said there are the, there was some canons one of those canons was the second one this second canon was related to deciding the borders of every diocese. So you understand now, not any bishop at any place that can jump it another place and start saying those people are heretic or not heretic. Actually, you want, this means there was a problem. Actually, you find out the problem was Alexandria. These are the people all the time they do this. And also the third one, he said, also, the, in, in this particular uh, council, that uh, the see of Constantinople or the diocese of Constantinople is now advanced and more superior because it is the city of the king. But uh, advanced to whom? In fact, there were Rome and the bishop there considered himself is number one for all the churches. It's the biggest church and, uh, and uh, like the strongest city and the, the, the king is there. Alexandria had the same feeling that we are number one. Uh, we are the, the people that understand theology. We are the people that when we call, call for councils, we just uh, like, uh, we can uh, excommunicate whoever would like to excommunicate. All right? So this means what now? Like Zanidaria would be number three, she is considered number one. Rome considered himself number one. Constantinople was considered number three. Now Constantinople will be number two. So in fact, since then, what happened after that? Theophilus smashed and excommunicated Don John Chrysostom. And by the way, John Chrysostom did not attend the council because he said it is illegal because Alexandria has nothing to do with Constantinople according to the book uh, sorry according to the council of Constantinople year 381 but he ex he, uh, he excommunicated him year 404 okay after that after that the same thing happened that Cyril who was actually the nephew of Theophilus did the same. He did not respect the border of his council, and even he also get inter uh, intervening with uh, uh, Constantinople again because the the, uh, the, the, uh, the the queen or the emperor over there uh, was not 
uh, happy with uh, Nestorius. They got together again and they uh, got rid of Nestorius by uh, saying he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he is heretic. Okay? And what happened after that? Now, both Rome and Constantinople now, they get fed up with Alexandria. After, the, after Cyril passed away in year 444, and again, his nephew took over. This, show, this shows you the, uh, what I would say, uh, the, um, uh, the corruption in the system. Like, Theophilus prepares his nephew, Cyril, and Cyril prepares his nephew, the uh, Dioscorus. And in fact, the three of them, if you read the history of them, they actually were criminals, like ISIS. Anyway, so they get, they get fed up with that. So... Rome and Constantinople decided now it's time the best way is to get rid of Alexandria those people actually the pharaohs the, they have nothing to do just catching something and calling for councils and excommunicating and getting rid of those who they don't actually uh, like so what happened is in year 451 uh, Discourse himself went even farther than his uh, uncle and the, the other uncle. Even he, I mean Discourse, excommunicated Laon, the bishop of Rome. Can you believe this? Of course, he did not attend the council, but he just communicated. So that was the arrogance of Alexandrian people. They can excommunicate anyone at any time. So what happened? They called, I mean, the, the, the bishops of Constantinople and, uh, and Rome, they decided now they do the same with Alexander Alexandrian people. So they called the, the, uh, uh, the scholars, like to judge him, to speak with him, to debate with him. And they, they were the majority. So it was hidden stuff. So they wanted to what? To get rid of the Bishop of Alexandria totally. Totally. So and they succeeded. So what happened is, the real thing was to get rid of Alexandria because of its arrogancy, as we see, as we've seen the the uh, the clip of Pope Shenouda. I talk about the greatness of Alexandria, the superior uh, supremacy of the uh, popes or patriarch of Alexandria. So actually, that was the real reason. Now, if you try to tell me the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, Council of Chalcedon was not a real one and they uh, uh, are not really excommunicated or the excommunication is not valid. I tell you also, all these councils had the same motivation hidden, but they put the banner as something related to faith, but it is not true. So, by the way, there is no other church was excommunicated by that much amount of 520 bishops except the Coptic Orthodox Church. Now I leave it up to you whether you think the decision was right or was wrong and whether those councils are really led by the Holy Spirit or not. But I assure you whether it is ecumenical, like, whether it is ecumenical councils or local councils or even the councils that even running the church individually, none of them actually are faithful at all. The banner is something but the motivation is politically who is the greatest i am number one i hope that reveals luck to you what this when you read it when they feel ah the council said no we understand now it is a hidden agenda all right and there is no holy spirit actually doing this so though the churches actually they are not led by the holy spirit anyway i hope it was useful to you uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel please do if you like the video, give it a like. Uh, it's a good idea if you can share it with others. And unless the Lord comes, we'll meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you all. Salam and see you